a while back, and when I say a while, I mean quite a while, as in about a year ago, I was contacted by Dan from Taylor's Murfield, and he asked me if I would like to turn one of their new, at the time, Pratchett pin kits. And of course, I jumped at the opportunity. Now, this kit is British made, so it took a little while for it to arrive in the US, and unfortunately, it has set on my bench for the better part of the last year. For that, I'd like to apologize to Dan and the folks at Taylor's Murfield. I would also like to thank them for sending me this kit. Now, I've grabbed this blank. This is an acrylic acetate crushed turquoise blank from Wood Turnings, and I've decided this is the blank I'm gonna make to this kit. I've never turned this blank before, and I've obviously never turned this kit, so it's gonna be a real exciting adventure on the video today. The brass tube for this pin kit requires an 11 32 inch drill bit. I want you to notice that I have not cut my blank yet. When I deal with these specialty blanks, I'm always worried that as the bit breaks through the bottom of the blank, it may cause some chip out. So what I like to do is I'll lower my bit just below the mark on the blank and I put a blue tape flag on there so I know where to stop. That way I can drill the blank take it to the bandsaw, cut it off, and I've got a perfectly clean edge on both ends of my blank. As we drill this blank, periodically I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna feel the bit. If it's getting hot, we're gonna pause, let the bit cool before we continue drilling. We're gonna take our time because we do not wanna take any chances at weakening or blowing this blank apart. That's pretty hot. We're gonna give it a few seconds to cool and then we'll continue drilling. Here's the end of the blank that I cut off and you can see where the drill bit stopped. What that did for me is it gave me a perfect entry and exit hole on the main blank. Because this material is so hard, I don't want to take a chance at chipping it up real bad when I'm taking the corners off of it. So I've got this sled that was given to me by Ron Rosello several years back, and it's a corner removal sled. Basically, I can put the blank in this nice little channel, run it through the blade, and it will just take the corners off.
to give you guys a sneak peek at the blank. I just finished turning it. It's got a really nice transition at the bushings. Uh, just needs a little bit of cleanup. I got a little bit of a dip right there, uh, but I'll go ahead and sand that out. And uh, I think it's going to turn out pretty nice. I am happy with how it looks so far because I was really nervous about this blank. They can be very difficult to turn. One of my favorite ways to sand is to take another blank with a nice flat surface and I'll wrap sandpaper around it. And then I can sand the blank. And when I do this, this flat surface allows me to get a nice smooth surface on the blank. This is great for acrylic blanks. It even works on wood blanks, but I primarily use it on acrylic and uh, things like true stone. As you sand, take a look at your scratched up areas versus your shiny areas. See the shiny area there? A little bit of an indention. One there, and one there. When I'm done, and I'll know when I'm done because the entire blank will have a scuffed surface and that's what I'm working for is that scuffed surface. I just finished sanding to 400 grit and in order to remove the centrifugal scratches, I took the paper and went back and forth on the blank, making sure to go off each end onto the bushings. Do not be afraid to sand onto your bushings. You need to really clean these ends of the blank up so you get a nice fit with your pin components. To remove those scratches, I'm gonna use some polishing pads and I got these from Penn State. They're actually six grits. There's one on each side and we're just gonna run through them. We're gonna dip them in water and we're gonna, it's just like micro mesh. We're gonna polish these up and then we're gonna wipe them off, get the slurry off between each grit and this should really remove these scratches. We'll go down to 12,000 grit and this blank should look incredible when we're done. I just wet the entire pad and using three fingers, I'm gonna put a decent amount of pressure on the blank and I'm just gonna kind of swirl the pad and you'll start to see the slurry build. And I'm gonna go ahead and re-dip it. That kind of cleans some of the slurry off, but it also keeps the uh, pad wet, which helps with heat buildup. Pay special attention once again at the uh, bushings. And you can see the slurry starting to build up. I'm just gonna to continue to do this through all six pads, and then we'll come back and we'll take a look at the blank. I just finished up with the micro mesh and dried the blank off. What I'm doing is searching, looking for any scars I can see. You see the light reflecting on top of the blank? It's a nice clear line. That's how you know you've got a nice finish. And if you watch that line as you rotate the blank slowly, you'll see scratches come into focus when they hit that light. And I'm just rolling this over and checking it out and it looks pretty darn good. I'm applying a little Renaissance wax, and I'm just gonna apply that with my finger, and the reason why is uh, your finger's not gonna scratch this blank. If you use a paper towel, a paper towel uh, has uh, grit to it. I don't know what it is, maybe it's 20,000, I don't know where it's at, but we don't want to uh, take a chance at scratching our blank. So we're just gonna get a decent amount on there. wipe the wax off my finger and now I'm just going to take my finger and buff the blank and what this is going to do is work the wax in and uh, just give it a good chance to uh, polish the blank and you can feel it I can feel it start like down here at this end it's starting to pull on the skin of my finger a little bit that's how you know the wax is dry and ready to be buffed off so I'm just that that end is starting to get better and right in the middle it's starting to get a little better but you can feel it you can feel it dragging at this point, the blank feels great. What I'm gonna do is uh, get my buffing wheels and we're gonna buff this blank up. When I buff a small blank, it's really difficult for me to hold it in my hand and buff it because the wheels wanna grab it and throw it. So I like to put my blanks onto a mandrel and I'll hold the mandrel onto the wheel and it lets me get a good grip on the blank so that I don't lose it or damage it. These are really nice bushings. You saw me turn between centers, but take a look at that bushing. You can see all the way down through it. So these particular bushings can be used on a mandrel or between centers. That makes it perfect because I can slide them right onto my mandrel, put a couple of spacers on here, tighten down my knurl nut, and I'm gonna have a great grip on this blank to buff it.
that end is a little bit loose. Look at that. Now, I don't exactly know why that is. Perhaps I had some epoxy in the tube, and when I filed it out, I enlarged the brass tube. But the way we fix that is, we're gonna grab just a little bit of medium CA. We'll put just a couple of little dots inside of the brass tube. We'll press that in, and it will dry solid, and it will stop that from moving. I'm gonna be using Mercury Adhesives Medium Flex Glue. And we just want to put a dot, and you wanna put it inside the tube. There it is, ooh. There we go, I'm gonna let it roll around a little bit. All right, I'll slide this back in there. And the reason why I put it inside the tube as opposed to on the outer edge of the grommet is because if it's inside the tube, it's not gonna squish out. Now, since I put CA in there, I need that CA to dry and flash off before I do anything else. So we're gonna basically lay this pin aside. We're gonna leave it for a, a little bit so that it can dry, that CA can cure. Then we'll come back and we'll thread the nib and the plunger into the pin and get our refill in there. You don't want to put that together prior to the CA having plenty of time to dry because if you do, you can end up gluing it to where your, your ink refill won't move, your plunger is it won't move. You don't want to take that chance. So let's leave this set. We'll come back shortly and finish assembling this pin. I let this blank set overnight so the CA could dry. And when I picked it up the next day, I grabbed the ferrule and pulled it right out of the blank. The CA did not adhere to the materials. And that's because I believe this is a stainless steel and uh, the inside of the tube being brass, it just didn't work. So I mixed up some epoxy and with a matchstick, I spread a little bit around the inside of the tube. I put the ferrule and the clip back on, let it set overnight and it is perfect. It will not move now. I can't move the clip or the ferrule. So we are ready to finish assembly of our pin. There's a spring in the nib, so you want to make sure you don't lose that. And the nib just threads right onto the front ferrule. And these ferrules are a different size, and I didn't mention that when I assembled it, but you need to be careful and watch for that because you don't want to put the wrong one on the wrong end of the pin. We're going to drop our refill in, and we'll get a hold of our plunger. We'll thread that into the pin. And I want you to take a look at that. That is a gorgeous pin. Look at that. I would really like to thank you for joining me for this project. And I want you to know that you are always welcoming my shop. Come back again and see me real soon. Take care.